you know, when God decided to write the Old Testament, I don't think he sat down and said, look, children of Israel, or whoever he chose at the time, because sometimes before there were children of Israel, he was still writing the Old Testament, so to speak. But I don't think he sat down and said, look, I'm going to use you as an object lesson, so get used to it, deal with it. <laughs> no, I think they would have objected to being the object of an object lesson. And that's what it is like with each and every one of us. You see, we may look around and see other people as object lessons for us to learn from. But that doesn't mean we're not also the subject of an object lesson for someone else to learn from. And sometimes that object lesson isn't such a good lesson. <laughs> More often than not, most Christians I know love track talk. I mean, men really enjoy it. You know, they like to, you know, talk down or talk at or yell about or whine or complain or, you know. Trash talk, you know, makes you feel self-righteous, makes you feel important. You feel like you've got something to say, you're going to say it, by golly, no matter what. And the interesting thing is, trash talk really is more of an American phenomenon than it is overseas. Overseas, you might get killed. <laughs> and that's a good thing. <laughs> because more often than not, what people don't realize about trash talk is this and what comes out is what condemns you this and what comes out is what saves you I, I don't know about you but I think I want more of what's coming out to look like what I'm about than what's coming out to prove where I'm going to go because it's not who I am you see I'd rather in some ways profess although I hate people that get into this you know positive profession or claim it profession thing, you know, because that's wrong and that's obvious. But in one way, it's right, because if you really want to change yourself, it says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So in some ways, if you do kind of like say things out loud, it will begin to influence you and change you in some ways, because the Spirit of God will use that. But it's really not the person professing it that's changing themselves. It's the Spirit of God using what tools he can find available to himself in order to rearrange a person's perspective about themselves. So it's really not profess or confess, either one, but it is the things that come out of your mouth you're held accountable for. You'll be held accountable for what comes out of your mouth as a witness and a testimony either to your salvation or to your condemnation. And that's why trash talk is really not a good idea. You see, people like to talk about each other. They'll gossip, they'll slander, they'll bear false witness, they'll lie, they'll find some bigoted, hypocritical statement that they can say, oh, so and so did this and da da da. You know, and they'll point the finger, wag the tongue. That's kind of what the Hebrew expression for bearing false witness or accusing people kind of like they do on the internet or gossip is wagging the tongue pointing the finger if you look that expression up in the hebrew especially in the old testament you're going to find it god's not pleased with it people that point the finger no oh boy you ought to look up a word study on that one god is not pleased when you're pointing the finger anywhere i mean even like hey you know one way but you don't point the finger. And the worst of all, worse than that, is the wagging of the tongue. You see, you may need a King James Bible in order to find those expressions, but they're closer to the accurate idiom. An idiom is just something that some idiot said, you know, so it's an idiom. <laughs> well, sort of. But the point is, is that it's a kind of expression. It's a like a colloquialism, the way we talk. You know, like when we're rapping and japping and talking and walking, you know, it's kind of like that. An idiom would be walk the talk, you know, which simply means that, you know, live what you believe or do what you said you would, or simply yes is yes and no is no. So an idiom is an expression of what God is saying to you in his word. 
And that idiom that's used in Hebrew is wagging of the tongue or pointing of the finger. God don't like it. He don't want it. As a matter of fact, he condemns it pretty, pretty forcefully. And so trash talk is the wagging of the tongue. Whenever you find people that are out there, you know, kind of tearing things down, you know, they always have some justification, you know, quote unquote, of why they're doing what they're doing. Now, I always ask these people, well, did the Lord tell you to do it? And I never get back, yes. I get back, the Bible says, you know, well, you're supposed to, you know, like, you know, have discernment. Well, yeah, but did the Lord tell you to do that? Did Jesus come to you and say, look, I want you to accuse someone on the internet or on Facebook or on Twitter or, you know, face to face or, you know, someplace. But I want you to accuse them before the brethren. I want you to accuse them before the world. I want you to point the finger at them. I want you to wag the tongue. Whenever I ask that question, I never get the straight answer. Now, I don't know about you, but I always figured that a person who's honest has a straightforward answer. You know, it's a yes or no. A dishonest answer will be something like, well, sort of. Sort of is no. You see, it's either yes or no. It's black and white, really, because bottom line is, did he tell you to do it or didn't he? And most people say, no, but it's in the Bible. And they'll, you know, invent some way of picking out which part they fit, you know, and it's like, oh, but I, I read it here, so I'm doing it. Okay, I claimed it, you know, I named it, and I wrote my name on it, so guess what? It's mine. Really? I thought it was the word of the Lord it came to me, and he said, not it was written, but he said. And, you know, I do find that interesting because Jesus is called the word. And if Jesus comes to you and speaks to you and tells you, look, I want you to trash talk that person, then by God, by all means, and by the Spirit of God, you go do it. You know, I'm standing back because <laughs> you'll answer for it. Because what God might have you do, I have no idea. But I do know, like I said, when I ask you, did the Lord say? Most people say something else other than yes or no. Trash talk, as far as I'm concerned, I've never seen the benefit of it. I've never seen anyone come away from trash talk in a positive spirit. They always have either anxiety or anger or malice or bigotry or bias or prejudice or some kind of attitude that I personally don't see how they can keep doing it. It's almost like the blind leading the blind into the blindness. You know, it's like, well, hey, come on, let's all get together and really get blind. You know, let's all sit in the darkness so that we can really get darker. You know, it's kind of like everybody wanting to go out and turn the lights down so they can do what they do in darkness. Proverbs warns us about that, that people who have that tendency to want to tear down, to rip down, to assault with the mouth, to cause, you know, some kind of division or strife, will do so privily laying snares and traps. Even like Facebook, you know, oh, well, you know, I didn't mean it against, you know, the president. I just called him a pig, a liar, a thief, or whatever it may be. You know, I didn't mean it against, you know, the president, like President Obama. I just meant it against, you know, what he stands for. And then they go into tearing down his character and his kids and his wife and his job and his whatever it may be. I thought that's the time you're supposed to reveal your nature about praying for those that are in authority. Not because you agree with them, but because you don't. You see, I always thought that it's easy, like Jesus said, to love those that love you. And I was like, hey, yeah, oh boy, yippee, they love me. But rather to be his disciple we had to pray for those that despitefully use you and to you know miserably abuse you and you know do all command of things against you falsely for my name's sake because I'm wanting you to be like me but I don't see that so much I see the majority of Christians can't separate the perspective from the person you see a person may have a wrong perspective they may look at things and say I'm looking out there and it looks like it's uh, going to rain. 
Well, if the person's blind, they may be looking out there, but they don't have eyes to see, do they? You see, a person's perspective is influenced by what they see, not what they know. So if they only see darkness, then of course it looks like it's going to rain because it's dark to them. But if you have a different perspective, more broad band, so to speak, you're able to see the full spectrum of light, then you're able to say, hey, you know what? I can see bright light over there. I don't think it's going to rain. Now, maybe you're blind and you see darkness, but you know I can see there's light. And so there's a conflict between the perspective a person has and what they, the person is, because a person that's blind can't help but see what they see. And sometimes people that are trash talking can't help but trash talk because that's what their nature is. They are in the trash bin, you know, because after all, that's the best place to trash talk is in a trash bin because you're talking about trash anyway. So leave it in the trash bin. But they climb out of that dumpster, you know, and they're no longer just venting it inside of, you know, some metal container that we could, you know, dump it and send it to, you know, like the refuse pile. You know, and Gehenna, hell, was called the refuse pile. Believe it or not, hell was, the original meaning of it, was where we dump the trash, and it burns forever. You know, it keeps burning the trash. And you take the trash out, and that's where it goes. That's what happens when you trash talk. You're heading for hell, literally. And if God decides to take the trash out, guess where you're going? I'm sorry, I don't care about your reassurance and assurance. What comes out of your mouth is more about what you are than what comes into your head. You know, you maybe think that you were well-read, but unless you're well-bred, guess what? You've got to be born again. <laughs> That's the way it is. You know, born of the Spirit, not of the flesh. You know, don't be indulging it. You might be heading the wrong way and be reborn back into the flesh. I don't know. If one is true, the other might be. Oops. But my point is this. When you indulge in the world, you become like the world. When you indulge in God, you become like God. What you are like-minded is what you are. If you walk in the light, as he is in the light, you have fellowship one with another, and you begin to enjoy that fellowship, not tear each other down. You can always tell that when someone has trash talk against one person, it's not very long before they're trash talking about every other person. Because as soon as one scapegoat is done, they pick on another scapegoat, and another, and another, and another, and another, and they become expert trash talkers. Do you ever notice that? Yeah, really. They just tear down, and tear down, and tear down, and tear down, and tear down. And it sounds good because if you've been sitting in darkness long enough, you know, and you haven't been in the light, it really kind of sounds interesting, doesn't it? It tickles the ears, makes your flesh feel good. It's like, yeah, get them. You get them. Because God says things that you really don't want to hear. You know, love your enemies, you know. Bless those that despitefully use you, you know, kind of like pray for those that you disagree with. Let them be right and you be wrong, even though you're in the right. Man, I don't like that scripture. Jesus said it. Ooh. Ouch. Because, you see, God wants you to trust him, not your mouth. God wants you to listen to Him, not someone else. People that have their own ear and talk to themselves usually make themselves out to be more than they are. They make themselves out to be righteous. And that self-righteousness always turns to trash talk. You'll find it in ministers lots of times. I know a famous minister, you know, well, John MacArthur, you know, to put it bluntly, about every two or three years, he comes out and slams Billy Graham. And I keep thinking, what in the world is your problem? You know, I mean, here you are, a man of God, esteemed by your fellow men as being, you know, knowledgeable of the Word of God, of the Bible. People like you, people pray for you, people, you know, treat you as with respect. But since he's not the number one evangelist in the world, I think he's got a real bitterness inside, you know, and he keeps getting upset because somebody will mention Billy Graham, ah, slammed him, bam, 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 you know, know that Billy Graham, he's off the wall, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like, you're kidding me. You know, what is it, you know, that you're so blinded by that you can't let go and let God release someone into their ministry and let them do what God had told them to do? And you have one man who's yet younger slamming a man who's in his 80s or 90s? It just doesn't make sense. So, 
don't trash talk about others, even as though it sounds like I did with John MacArthur. No, John MacArthur is a wonderful man of God. You know, God uses him in lots of ministry things. Um, I don't personally follow his ministry much. You know, I've read some of his material. It's good. You know, I've listened to him a couple times. You know, it's good. You know, it's just not my cup of tea. It's not something I want to do or be. But those that I do want to see how they live, what they say, usually I can tell by what they say. You know, and if they are out there building up the body of Christ, if they're out there sharing and caring enough to tell me to follow Jesus, then I know they're heading in the right direction because they're not following men or pointing fingers at men or wagging the tongue, but rather they're causing me to be inspired to seek the Lord while he may be found, to walk in his ways, to look and find where is God today. And that's what you and I need to be very careful of because it's very easy to see someone less wise than we are. It might be easy to tell someone to do something we think is good for them. It might be real easy to kind of like go, yeah, but I heard something about them, and fall into gossip. You see, trash talk doesn't start off in a major way. It starts off in a simple way. Even as easy as talking about your own pastor, your own church, your own neighbor, your own friend, your own family, trash talk doesn't do anybody any good. If you want to trash talk, I always tell people this, because I used to do it. I say, look, if you want to whine, go to your wife. She's not going to put up with it, so why should God? I mean, literally, because men whine. You know, women complain, men whine. You know, men, women will complain about something, and I'll tell you, honey, I need to do this, you know. Honey, are you going to get that? Honey, are you going to? And, you know, they repetitiously do it. And even Jesus said, you know, hey, that unrighteous judge, you know, he would judge righteously because guess what? A woman's bugging him. <laughs> men know what that means. <laughs> and she, don't let it go. <laughs> like a dog on a bone, man, it just keeps bugging me until I do it. But men whine. They'll whine about this, whine about that, and they act like, oh, but I'm judging righteously. You know, I'm, I'm my discernment. You know, we always put like a spiritual cast on it. You know, to kind of cover up really the sinful nature that we are. We don't want to get caught with our pants down. You know, literally. And so when we get our ego hurt or our pride hurt, we talk back. We talk trash. We attack, attack, attack. Really, God says no, no, no. Don't defend yourself. Rather, let the offense come at you. And let me be your defense. Let the Lord your God be your offense. Not you. Not your mouth. Not your words. Not your deeds. Not your gun you think you got to carry around. So many people have props. You know, they need to prop up their faith in some way. You know, oh my God, I don't have enough faith, so I better go buy a gun. Uh, it makes perfect sense, <laughs> really. But when you walk with God and talk with Him, you begin to realize God doesn't talk trash. God talks action. He does, according to His Word. What he says, he means, and what he means, he says, and he does it exactly the way he said. And he doesn't compromise on it. Straightforward. We need to walk away if we're trash talking. Get away if we're trash talking. Get alone at some point in time and do what we should be doing always, anyways. Talk to God about it. Yeah, really. No. I mean, when you're trash talking, talk trash to God and see how it works. I did. I used to swear at God. I used to cuss at God. I used to be mad at God. I used to tell him what for and why for and how for and every for you could think of, including the four-letter words. <laughs> you didn't see that one coming, did you? Me? Fours? What for? How for? Why for? You know, and all those fours, including four-letter words. And God let me. You know, I'd be out in the parking lot, you know, stomping and chomping and romping, you know, all over the parking lot, you know, mad. You know, like a little ant running in an ant heel to, when you kind of like stir the ant heel, they all, you know, they run around and all like, ah. Me, I was like a little guy in a parking lot, you know, kind of middle of the night, you know, dark, you know, yelling at God. You know, should have been locked up. <laughs> but I did. You know, and God let me. And the reason is, is because what you do in private with the Lord is one thing, but what you do in public with everyone else is a whole different story. 
in private with the Lord, you really have all these angels also that are there. And Jesus is listening, you know, he's interceding for you. The Spirit's making you know, intercession on your behalf, you know, with groanings and moanings that you don't even know what's about. Like, oh God, he's going again, you know, stop him. <laughs> That's the kind of moaning that the Spirit of God did for me. <laughs> oh no, there's Michael, uh oh, we better interpret for him, because <laughs> he's really messed up. And thank God, God did it. And thank God, God let me. But no one heard me. No one knew what I was upset about. And, you know, at different times in my life, I've been very close to really losing it in trash talk. Different things that hurt me, you know, or hurt me, or twisted my, twisted my whiskers. But the reality of how we deal with those things is what we should be doing when we talk to God rather than trash talk to others. Because, you see, trash talk to God, unless you're really Jewish, you know, it doesn't get you very far. Sometimes trash talk to God is a lot of fun. I mean, I used to do it a lot, you know, and boy, it took me a long time to get over it. Because, you see, at the end of trash talk with God, he don't fight fair. When I was done trash talking, he just loved on me. He was like, oh, Michael. You know, I'm like, what do you do with somebody that loves you? How do you fight back against love? How do you overcome something that's so enveloping it's just bear hug you know i mean it's like god that's not what i want i don't want to be loved i want to be mad <laughs> you know you just can't stay mad somebody that loves purely covers a multitude of sins you know i mean it really does it just wipes you out you're just like okay fine i give up and then i cry you know and i just let god hug me you know and then i hug him back you know and we talk you know and then i'd be kind of like oh mellowed out and mushy like a marshmallow and I just yeah God I'm so please forgive me yeah, you know, yeah. yeah and really most trash talkers are just big babies inside they get their way and they're whining they're like wet diaper time you know they're just mad you know they're just like a little kid in a candy store you know wants to eat the candy God said no, so they're going to whine about it. That's what trash talk really is. It's just whining. Quit. Don't do it. Knock it off. Grow up. The reality of trash talk always reveals the sinful nature, but also the immaturity of the person who is. When you see someone trash talking, they just have a grown up. You know what I mean? I'd like to say that it's you know, sinful and you, know, you can condemn them now because they're full of sin and now you can go out and tell them to repent for the king of heaven out of here. But it's not that, really. Really what it boils down to is just immaturity. They haven't grown into the stature of the man that God wants them to be, or the woman. They rather, when they have nothing to say, they choose to talk about trash than to talk about God. And that's what it boils down to. Trash talk, even when it's put through the superfluous vocabulary of trying to make it sound as though you're being a judge or a prophet or some kind of like rebuker or you know, trying to tell people about their sin boils down to really Jesus said no John the Baptist we had you're not in we're done now you need to do what I said to do and that was to go out and to not rebuke the world but that through Jesus the world might find salvation and through you they might find not condemnation but the realization of Jesus alive and well and living inside of you if you were not trash talking but rather sharing the gospel and the good news than telling everyone about how much you have so much bad news to share because really are you one of the bad news bears? Or a good news bear. Some of us have to bear it all <laughs> in order to get over being full of bad news in order to get to the good news. I wouldn't want to be caught bare naked in the sight of God when I'm trash talking because <laughs> the reality is it's like the emperor's new clothes. You don't have a righteous leg to stand on when you're trash talking.